Okay, part three, third and final. Uh, we were starting with steel, the last three of those sort of exterior steel elements, the cold rolled steel in the building, starting with the white clean. So you can see this already has sort of a texture map on it that gives it a bit of a, a dirtiness to it, give it a little more uh, of an accuracy to how the building is in its, uh, in its, its real state. Uh, so we're going to leave that map there, and I'm going to put that also in the reflect uh, and in the Reflect Glossy and lock these guys in. Um, I'm not going to do a color correct, though I probably should at some point, but I think what I might do instead is just sort of mix those. So I might just take that down to like uh, 50, maybe even 20. Do a pretty subtle effect on it. I'll maybe take that down to 50. Um, something like that and then maybe put this down to like a 0.8 and a 30 whoops not 23 32 it's always good to do these subdivisions in multiples of 8 for, for whatever reason that uh, helps the formulas so that's maybe about as reflective as I would want the steel to be maybe it's a little too much if you want to go in and color correct those you could but I'm gonna leave it like that the, the other thing I want to do though is I want to give it a different kind of bump map because when steel is powder coated uh, when it's cold hot rolled and powder coated it has a, a very heavy orange peeling and has a bit of a texture to it so I want to put that on and I want that to be sort of a variable across all of these uh, bits of steel so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a map here uh, in the bump that's a noise map and those are that's down here noise and here I can do the size the high and the low so I'm just gonna affect the size to get it to where I want I know this is about a six inch uh, sphere so I want to get it to where I want so it looks uh, fairly decent so let's see if I make that really small what happens maybe that'll help uh, make it there that's that's something uh, let's see if I can go even smaller and make that a bit more of a subtle texture maybe I want that to be a little bit more than that 0.08 Actually, I might, uh, I might go to 0 0.01 on that. No, 0.1, not 01. 0 0.01. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that, and then I'll, you know, it's a little bit exaggerated, so I can always affect it here. Just go down to maybe 20. Not a huge fan of that. 15. It's starting to look a little more like steel. It is too reflective. Um, so I think I'm going to maybe, if I can't get this down to where it's something reasonable. Uh, you know, I think that's okay. It's a little bit high gloss, maybe a little more high gloss than I would want. Um, Whoops, 0.5. That looks a little bit plasticky. Looks a little bit better. So you just kind of need to mess with these things until you feel like it, it's where you kind of want it to be. And you always want to do a test render to make sure it works too. So maybe that's 15. I'm gonna call that good that's that's okay so now what I want to do is take this noise map and click and drag it into one of these spots and you can do this with anything any JPEG or anything and now I've got it all by itself here that I can sort of look at just the noise map and then I can go into these guys and under the maps I can drag that into the bump and I think I did it at like 15, 15, 80, you know, kind of copy the whatever you did in the other one. Something like that. Then do it the next one.
drag it in and that's it all of my materials are all set everything's ready to roll and I am gonna save this it's my Farnsworth demo saving it and I hit the render button and we'll see what happens So in general that looks pretty good. I want to see how it is in detail. Uh, so I'm going to cancel this out and I'm going to start to zoom away in there. I'm going to zoom in where I can see a lot of different materials. Let me see if I can zoom right in here. Maybe like that. See what that looks like just to make sure that I've got those materials kind of set up well. It's obviously rendering a little dark now because I'm indoors, but I can see that that looks good. I mean, the environment looks right. It looks like I'm getting good light. It looks like all the texture maps are coming in. This looks like it's reflecting the way I want it to. All good. So that's our basic setup. Now the last two things I want to show you are how to do some entourage, how to do grass, and how to bring in trees. So the grass is pretty simple. I take this ground plane and I can go into a, an empty slot like uh, this one right here. Maybe I'll do this one because this one I took up before. Um, and I'll go where it says arc and design, materials, V-Ray, V-Ray material. And then I'm going to click and drag that onto the ground plane so it's on there. And then, I'll, and then what I'll do here is um, get material. And, it, and then I'll go into the um, open material library and do environment. Environment is kind of uh, everything that is in trees or architecture, basically, for me. Uh, and I'll double click on grass and bring grass in there. So I can see that I, I need to get a material map. I mean, my material is not mapping, so I can click the M, go into my material library, uh, ground cover, and I'm going to use this H this HR high res grass. And there's my grass material. Apply that to the plane, and now I've got some grass. Now I want to set the displacement of the grass itself which I can do by clicking on the plane so that it's selected and then I go into the modifier and in the modifier list I can go down to the, the um, V-Ray displacement mod displacement modifier 2D map, I want to make sure that's a 2D map and then I'll go to my um, texture to bitmap up to ground cover and then there's a grass displace map so I'll select that and I'll set the amount to be what I want the height of the grass to be. So say I want to do a 5 inch high grass. And I want that resolution to be pretty high. I'll do that at like 1600. Actually let's do 1200 because I think that's about what the image is. And that's our displacement. Now I want to make sure it maps correctly on here. So I also want to do a um, UVW map as another, dis as another uh, modifier. I want that to be planar. I want to uncheck the real world map size and I want to set this to maybe 12 feet by 12 feet to start with. See how that looks. It looks kind of okay. Let's do 10. 10. Looks a little better. How about 8 by 8? That looks good. So that's my grass. Then I want to put in trees. And I'll show you what this did. The displacement modifier, what it does is actually, it's not a bump map. It actually impacts the geometry. It makes the grass. So then if I want to put in trees, I want to go under the create geometry, V-Ray, and then I want to click on the V-Ray proxy. Now I'm going to go over to this plan view. I'm going to put a tree in plan somewhere where I want it. So let's say I want to do this big tree that I know is right here. I'm going to plop that right there. And this should bring up this with all of my tree options. So I'm going to do an extra, extra large maple. Gigantic maple. And you can see it brings in, that's a little bit too extra, extra large. It's a giant tree, so probably these proxies were made at a, at a different scale than the current model. So I can always scale this down. I'll probably want to go down. If it's 
a factor of 12, then I probably want to go with, maybe we'll just say 0.2, and we'll see how that looks. Still looks pretty big. Let's go to maybe uh, 0.15. Nah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then, you know, you can see how I make trees. You get kind of this preview. And a proxy is basically, you know, this the tree is uh, has a bazillion polygons. The proxy pulls it down to just a few little triangles. So it allows me to do a whole bunch of trees without crashing the computer. Uh, so it's a nice thing to do. So I probably, when I make these, I do a very high trunk. So I can mess with the trunk and and decide where I want the crown of the tree to be once I get in here. So obviously, if a tree is pruned and cared for, you see nothing but trunk up to the to the building height. Um, if it's a little more wild, like it is at the Farnsworth house at that site, the you'd see less trunk and the it'd be less pruned. So I want to pull that down. So I'm in this one, you know, I'm clicking the mouse wheel to be in the left view. Um, panning around with my pushing down my mouse wheel and then this little guy this indicator gives me motion and I can go over the Y and pull that down to where the leaves are just about down to the ground maybe like that and there's a tree so then I can go up here and I can go control C control V and it allows me to copy it as an instance I can do that and then I can make another one and I can start to place other trees back here that are copies. Usually it, you can place a number of copies of trees with that are they're complex enough that you don't start to read them as copies unless you do like 10 of them in a row. And the other way you can uh, mix it up is to do different types. So I can go to the, the elm And I can move that elm tree down so that it's pruning a little less. Um, and then maybe I'll do the, uh, the oak. These other trees look like they're scaled correctly. Oak tree, I'll pull down the trunk so that it's in a good spot. You can see here if I go over both of them, I get that square and I can move them together. So I can start to do this, and then I can start to, you know, take all three of these, Control C, Control V, and I can make several copies of them. And I can start to make rows and rows of trees, which is what I eventually want to do. You know, I want to fill the scene with trees. It takes a long time to render, but it's worth it. So now I want to assign materials to them. So I go to my material editor. I'm going to bring in the tree materials. Those are also in the envir um, in the tree material library. Open trees. There are my tree materials. So I've got I did an elm, right? So I'll do an elm. I did a, a maple and I did an oak. And I know that those are all three in the in these uh, particular ranges right here. Uh, so I'll do elm, maple, oak. And because I did all these as instances, they should all be there in all the other ones. So I'm going to run a test render and see what happens. And now you'll see that the rendering starts to take a really long time. This is our final render. So I'm going to pause this.